Okay, I have an idea to test out a new type of business called MakerTable.com that can operate in a post-scarcity economy. If you are familiar with post-scarcity economics, like most of you probably aren't because it's not that popular right now, the basic premise is this. Humans are being replaced by technology. And where humans can't be replaced by technology, they're being replaced by cheaper humans in other countries that have a lower standard of living. This is not a mystery to anyone of working age in the modern world. America's crown jewel is responsible for this rapid change. Capitalism. Capitalism is designed to direct profits to the most efficient means of production. Translation, we want cheap stuff, and our demand for cheap stuff is what drives the system forward, creating new technology like robots and new methods like outsourcing that give us more cheap stuff. It's easy to get mad about our jobs being shipped overseas, and immigrants coming into our country accepting low wages for tough work, and robots taking manufacturing jobs away from our fathers, and e-commerce taking out local mom and pop shops that haven't figured out how to compete with the internet for Main Street. But what do all of these things tell us? And more importantly, what are we gonna do about it? All of these things are signs of a radical shift in our economy. We're in the middle of the technological revolution right now, just like the industrial revolution of the 19th century. We are in the middle of disruptive change and exponential innovation. The world is changing, our work is changing, and our lives personally are changing. Where some see insurmountable challenges, I see opportunity. In the next 10 years, we will see self-driving cars. What makes you think self-driving semis aren't next? And what are the implications there? What's that gonna do to jobs? We will have a digital integration with the physical world. Have you seen Pokemon Go yet? Yeah, it's a silly game, but what is happening under the surface? A company has convinced a bunch of couch lock gamers to get up and interact with the real world. Don't think companies all over the world haven't taken notice of this. What if there was a coupon waiting for you in the aisle at the store that you could only catch with your cell phone? What does that mean for newspaper coupons? What does that mean for salespeople? What if you found a stray dog in real life and its owner's info was accessible by pulling out your phone and capturing the little bugger on your camera. Combining the digital and physical world will lead to insane innovation that we can't even comprehend yet. And my hedge is, it's gonna replace a lot of jobs. These changes are coming. The next 10 years could even see an entirely new power grid take off. What if we linked all the private solar systems in a neighborhood together and distributed the power on demand as needed? Everyone doesn't need power at the same time. And if everyone has a linked solar system in your neighborhood, you could get by with a much smaller system because you would be part of a grid, just like you're already part of a grid, if you think about it. But in your current grid, you don't pay for the hydroelectric dam, the substations, and the transmission lines. You just pay for how much you use them. There is the potential for a relatively small number of people to create an electric co-op and manage their own micro power grid free of hydroelectric dams, substations, and huge transmission networks for a rel relatively small cost per member. You could even sell excess power back to that existing grid and put that money in a community development fund after the solar is paid for. What's that going to mean for all those jobs in the electric transmission uh, and generation industry? All this is leading up to a society where work as we know it is less valuable. I mean, just face it. There's less need for jobs. There's less need to pay people that much for these jobs because there's going to be a huge pool of people looking for a small amount of jobs. Look at all the people that dropped out of the job market during the last recession. Our unemployment numbers dropped in a large part because people stopped looking for work altogether. Why did they stop looking for work? Supply and demand. There were millions of people looking for thousands of jobs. After companies tightened their belts and laid a bunch of people off, they looked around and realized, huh, they were fine without those people. They didn't need most of those people that got laid off because they already have technology and systems to do that work. So a lot of jobs got eliminated when those people got fired because they simply didn't need that position anymore. During the industrial revolution of the 19th century, machinery became more important than labor. It used to take five guys to push a cart of goods around a shipyard. It can now be done by one guy on a forklift that can move 10 times what those five guys could move in half the time. If you own a shipyard and the shipyard down the street gets a forklift, what are you going to do? Probably buy a forklift and a pallet jack 
so you can maintain your competitive edge and stay in business. Okay, so robots and machines can replace blue collar workers, but a college degree and a white collar job will protect you, right? Because a robot can't replace a highly skilled doctor. Wrong. Johnson & Johnson recently created the Sedasis system that's already approved by the FDA. That's done. This exists, people, that can replace an anesthesiologist by automatically delivering low levels of anesthesia to a patient. An anesthesiologist is one of the highest paid specialties in the medical profession. How can that be replaced by a robot? It's being replaced by a robot because it is one of the highest paid specialties, which means the most money can be saved by automating that process. So in some ways, the more money you make, the higher the incentive to replace you. With all that in mind, we come to the concept of post-scarcity. Here's the idea. A lot of our jobs will be replaced by robots, machines, automated systems, and software, which will lead to a bunch of people out of work or only working part-time to manage these things that are mostly automatic and automated. So what are we gonna do with all this extra time? And more importantly, what are we going to do with that much income? Which I'm sure you're already thinking about. Well, the income part won't be as big of a problem as you think because eliminating a bunch of people from companies also eliminates a bunch of costs associated with having those employees like wages, healthcare, social security, payroll taxes, Medicare, retirement accounts, human resources services, payroll services, yada, yada, yada. You get it. Combine that with the productivity and quality gains in eliminating human error and you have a lot of stuff available for cheap. Look around wherever you are right now and take a look at all the stuff you already have for a relatively low price. Is it really hard to believe that we will live in a world in the near future where all of our basic needs are met and meeting those needs doesn't cost much? I can totally see it coming. So what is left? Well, some are already getting excited about the idea of living a semi-retired life with tons of leisure time to go fishing or learning to play an instrument or even watching TV while couch surfing through a galactic cruise ship, being endlessly entertained without ever leaving your seat, just as advertised on Wally. -E. But I am curious about what kind of business is still going to be operating at this point we're calling post-scarcity. And I'm not talking about like a General Electric or an Apple or some huge, you know, monolithic conglomerate on an international scale. I'm talking about like, is there going to be mom and pop shops? You know, can I have a lifestyle business? Support my family here in my local community? How is that going to work? Uh, this is the idea behind makerspaces, open source software, creative collectives like Burning Man, and co-ops. I think each of these things is trying to get us to post-scarcity more smoothly by trying to solve the physical, digital, creative, and business problems that are created by our changing economy. So here's the idea. I'm going to create a business called makertable.com that uses open source design, my designs, and hopefully other people's too, uh, to create physical, digital, and creative products, like real tangible products, not like some software program that doesn't really have work and you know out there, like a real thing that you could actually buy. Uh, and these things I'm hoping will inspire people to make their own things. By giving away the design file, we will enable people to make their own if they want to, or tweak it, or make it and sell it and keep the profit, you know, if that's what you're into. I want people to have the tools and skills that they need to support themselves in this new economy. I've learned to support myself and my family in this current economy by shaping the physical world around me, building dams, bridges, roads, subways, and high-rises as a union iron worker. That's what I am right now. That's what I do. That's my day job. Now I'm trying to learn and develop the next set of skills to support myself and my family in the future. And I want to share this process so other people can do the same. So how can I use my skills to bring about this change in a positive way? I'm a metal fabricator and an iron worker. How can I possibly have any effect on this great global change that is already underway? The answer is simple. I can harness available technology like a plasma table, welder, chop saw, band saw, tube bender, press brake, you know, all the things for metal fabrication um, to deliver low cost, free design, 
uh, open source products. Most custom fabricators would cringe at the idea of giving their hard-earned design files away for free because it takes a lot of time in research and development, you know, measuring, prototyping, uh, refining. There's a big long process in R&D and it, you know, it takes a lot of time and money. Um, but I'm willing to bet, and I mean very literally because I have my life savings tied up in my fab shop, that just because you teach someone to fish by giving a design file away, doesn't mean that they will go to the river every time they're hungry. Most of the time, they're just going to pay you for a fish because they're not as efficient as you or simply because McDonald's is a lot closer than the river. But I also know there's a bunch of people out there, like me, that would like to make their own things. Not for the efficiency or convenience, but for the immense satisfaction derived from creating something. The companies that will copy you and sell a tweaked product are going to do that regardless because they see opportunity in the marketplace. The makers that want to use their, their own version of your design will just copy it as best they can anyways and have their own hacked version. So just give the design away and foster faster innovation and greater creativity than you could do on your own. Then take back your competitor's innovation on your product and improve it again further, so on and so forth, until the market matures and it's time to create something new. Does that sound a lot like capitalism minus the design portion? Besides. I can't afford to file a patent. I don't even really know how to file a patent. It just looks expensive and complicated, let alone afford to prosecute someone for patent infringement. So I can let that stop me or frustrate my efforts, but I'm deciding just to get over it. Think about how much faster progress will come to the companies that open up their design to everyone. I mean, why do you think Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, made the patents on his brand new electric cars that they just spent who knows how much money developing and researching open source. He's giving those patents away for free. You want to know why he's doing it? Because he's baiting other entrepreneurs into the space to invest their own money and improve his products for their own financial benefit and ultimately his too. So can't I do the same on a much smaller scale, let's say in a metal fabrication shop? Couldn't you do the same on a much smaller scale if you had a carpentry or wood shop or a jewelry making business? or a software developer. Um, so I'm starting MakerTable.com as a laboratory for this new concept of open design, micro manufacturing, selling real tangible products while simultaneously giving away the intellectual property for free in the hope that it fosters creativity and progress. Think about it this way. What if you had a marketplace for makers like Etsy combined with the practical knowledge of Instructables, all backed by a community of motivated designers, you know, like myself, and hopefully a lot of other people out there that are watching this and think it's a cool idea, contributing to and improving new and existing designs that are on the site. What if everybody involved got a portion of the sale on those tangible goods that were being created? Would that sufficiently motivate this community to innovate and invest their own time and money? I think so. I sure am. I'm willing to bet that you have your own ideas on this concept and that your ideas plus my ideas are greater than the sum of their parts. So let's make something real that can be useful in developing real skills to make the transition to post-scarcity as smooth as possible. You can be sideswiped by post-scarcity like I was during the Great Recession, or you can turn your side hustle, hobby, or professional skills into a resource for others to use and everyone to profit off of financially and intellectually. That is the idea for MakerTable.com. If this resonates with you, I strongly encourage you. Not encourage, that's fancy. Just please reach out to me, man. Shoot me an email. I want to hear from you. Uh, I want to collaborate. Um, you know, if you're looking to collaborate with me, invest or contribute to this project in any way, uh, even just you have an idea, this keeps something off for you in your own life, uh, let me know. MakerTable at gmail.com. Like I said, I'm an iron worker not a programmer or UI designer. So if this is a project that interests you and you have some skills that you think would be pertinent that you're willing to contribute, email me again, makertable at gmail.com. This is the very beginning of this journey and I don't know where it will lead, but I do know that my skills will be put to good use during the transition. What about yours?